so now we are talking about that is why we are talking about is cloud access governance and intelligence right okay so what we are saying is that we have done the basics we have uh, we know how to let's say configure savian we know how to configure rules technical rules user update rules and everything and we have set it up but now we want to create reports so that we can know the health of the system is fine what type of users are working in my organization do they have any over access do they have any under access all such scenarios needs to be covered so for that what happens is other idm tools such as oracle identity manager or forgeog they have very complicated way of generating reports okay, okay. Whereas, as we discussed if you remember we were discussing about workflows in our last discussion yeah. and about how easy workflows was to configure i mean obviously okay. the business case can become very complicated that we i want the first request to go to this and then to that and this and that but that is still manageable if you can just drag and drop things right if yeah. you have to code the entire logic maybe do a testing round maybe then your testing team will test it and then you do a deployment it is a very uh, cumbersome process and as compared to that this is very simple so is the case with analytics so if you want to generate reports in other applications it is comparatively difficult because you'll have to come up with the logic you again might have to write something called as schedulers and uh, process tasks and all that stuff which is not required here okay here again right very simple if you if you know how to write mysql queries you are almost done okay, okay. tell you how you are done okay yeah so, so first, here we are going to use mysql exactly mysql okay I mean, it is a MySQL server. The queries are usually SQL, very basic queries. At most, okay. even if it gets very complicated, you might have some joins that will come into the picture. But you okay. can actually avoid that as well in case you want to. Okay, okay. so I'll tell you how to uh, how how to make uh, sense of this though. Okay, so what we're talk talking about is that identity analytics is a discipline that applies logic and science to identity access to data, provide insights for making better IAM decisions. So this is the the major part. that we want to make sense of how our system is running right okay once we get that report we'll be able to understand what are the flaws in the system what are the shortcomings what do we need to improve upon right okay so what they are saying is the identity analytics tools employ features that move organization towards a i mean this is a, i mean doesn't even matter forget it so let's talk about actual scenarios how to configure this so there are two type of analytics to be frank okay one is okay. called as the normal analytics where i'm just fetching reports there is an advanced version of analytics where we can also perform actions so to okay. give you an example uh, i generate a report of all the users who doesn't have a manager assigned to them okay, okay. or i get a, a list of all the accounts of such users whose identities are already disabled okay, okay. so they have left the company but still some of their accounts are active if okay. i get A list of all such user accounts. One thing is that I uh, that I pulled out a report. The okay. second part is that I also disable those accounts, right? So that makes more sense, right? That even if you have put a, if if you are able to fetch a report, what do you do with that report is also important. Rather, okay. it is more important because there is no point of just knowing where the problem is if you cannot resolve it, right? Okay. And that is the reason you have the possibility of writing an actionable analytics so the okay. sql queries will remain the same but after the sql query you can take some action on the people who are part of that report you can okay. either disable their account you can either provide them new access you can provision their accounts you can provide them new entitlements you can okay. do all of this right so that yeah. those are called as actionable analytics as the name denotes it has actionable associated with it so obviously you are taking action on the report that you are fetching okay let's okay. so have a look at the normal analytics first okay okay so what we are going to do is again we are going to if you remember is, uh, since i mean from the from our past trainings we have discussed admin we have discussed yes. roles sods and ars right yeah yeah so we are going to discuss analytics so you okay. click on analytics you click on the left side analytics configurations and then you click on action and then create new So when you click on create new, you will see using SQL query. You are creating an analytics using SQL query. Okay. Now these are the kind of SQL queries that you will write. Okay. okay. So this is for the same example that I was giving you: inactive users with active accounts. Okay. Why now we have also understood why is is that a problem? Why okay. should we not having a, a inactive user with active account? Accounts? Okay. And remember always that user denotes user identities, right? Yes. as accounts denote uh, what accesses or let's say to which applications do they have access to 
right okay now let's discuss this query what are we doing here okay so in, within savian there are different objects as in every database right you will have yeah. some some objects within those objects you will have certain attributes or columns and within okay. those to store values right so yes. obviously if i want to store a value or if i want to talk about users what will be some of the attributes that users will have users will have their first name they will have their last name they will have their status they will have their email id this is going to i mean be part of their table let's say right or object okay then you have accounts so accounts will include account name account name so i was telling you the other day right that some target applications might might have a different criteria of giving account names some okay. might say that okay my if you want to create account on salesforce your username has to have a domain name associated with it which means at the gmail.com let's say where are there are some other applications as in if you log into your net banking there you have a username which is not in the form of an email address right it okay. is some unique value right yeah similarly if you go to ircetc they will give you a unique username and that username need not have to be in a form of @domain.com it should not be an email id right okay yeah. so basically uh, as per the target application the way the username is expected to be is different correct yes so obviously the the way we need to provision user to that application will also differ right okay in each application so let's say in case of salesforce my username has to be in the email format whereas in case of ircetc it has to be a normal user username name it has just need to be a unique value so okay. because it dependent yeah so because it is dependent on the target application that how the attributes should be those mm. need to be stored in a separate table right because yeah. obviously the user identities is going to be the same for all the users but depending upon which uh, which application do they want access to and what type and what is the requirement of that application itself that is what will decide that okay you need to store user name in this format first name in the, this format some applications called last name as surname other application called surname as last name right so all of these are dependent on the target application that we are dealing with and that yeah. is why we have a separate table called as accounts table which stores it for individual accounts and each account denotes a target application so when i'm talking yeah. about let's say account name right okay. this account name if i'm talking about salesforce it will become let's say abc whereas if i'm talking about let's say your facebook account it will become abc.com right okay right and then yes, we I have can understand yeah and then we have endpoint name so every target application so we have discussed this that what is an endpoint basically an endpoint is a logical representation of the target application that we are dealing with right yeah. so in our if we are taking an example of salesforce let's consider it salesforce so we are saying that there is a table called as endpoints table okay so we are denoting endpoints as ep we are just using okay. a variable so that we don't have to write endpoints over and over again similarly okay. accounts um denoted by acc variable so we've just defined variables here okay, okay. but in respect of the point here is that we have different kind of tables each of the, those tables contains specific attributes which we can use to fetch reports so here okay. what happens we are here we have we are saying that select users username which is, is the unique username of the user user so all this you rep, uh, represents users table okay. right so users table denotes user identity so you have username first name last name manager account name uh, and endpoint name we have got we have received all this information and then we are saying that we want to get all such users where so you, these are just to make sure that we are selecting do uh, basically between users table and there are two tables right one is users table one is accounts table there is also a users account table why is that table why do why does that table exist because we have talked about this that there is a, u, a users identity and then there is other uh, users accounts but we'll have to create a correlation between the two right i need to know that this salesforce account this uh, outlook account uh, this uh, have, let's say box account all of these accounts belongs to deepa so i'll have to okay. maintain that correlation so the users table you'll have deepa her first name and all those details within the accounts table you'll have that uh, deepa uh, .salesforce.com deepa.outlook.com or, or all the details related to the target applications 
and okay. there will be a points table which will hold the mapping of both these two right so okay. let's say the key uh, the username key or the user key will, will be associated with the account key of all these three applications within okay. the user account table so that's how the correlation will work right so okay. you need not worry a lot about how this works because there within savient there is something called as a data analyzer okay okay so you go to admin you can go on the left side and there will be something called as a data analyzer and within that data analyzer you will see all the objects all the uh, tables that are present within savient if you click on those tables all the columns which are present under those that table and if you hover over it you will also get to see what, what that table contains or what that column uh, what type of values does that column hold so you can explore that okay don't okay. be worried about it so okay. that is how it works within it okay okay but what you need to know uh, there are three four or let's say in all total five a uh, type of uh, tables that you need to know of one is endpoint table which will hold value of the endpoint that is a tar target application that you are dealing with the okay. user table the account table and then you will have the entitlement table so i told you the last time as well that you can give access to a person to a certain application target application but within that target application what access are you giving to that person right that is called as entitlement you yes. and can both have salesforce account but once you log in you might see, see different things i might see different things right yes. and that different entitlements so you also have an entitlement table what will the entitlement table hold that okay this user has access to this application but within that application what are the entitlements that the user is part of right okay. all those would be there so basically what we are saying is that all this information is stored which you can use to write sql queries to to generate reports if you look at this query the most important part of this query is this okay this is the actually the entire logic it is okay. saying that if the user's status key is zero right okay. you status key is equals to zero which means users dot status key is equals to zero which means user is inactive okay and if account dot status is one which means account status is active okay then we'll have to pick all such users correct okay yeah so that is that was the logic that we were trying to discuss anyways that we want all such users who are okay. inactive whose identities are inactive but whose accounts are active for some reason right? yeah we want to get all such uh, accounts now so let's say i created a new sql query and okay. i pasted it here in analytics query yeah. gave it a name inactive users with active accounts gave it a status and if you see here there is a very uh, good option called as allowed action so this okay. is what i was talking about that you have two option one is that you only fetch report of all such users and okay. second is that you also want to take action on those which are part okay. of those, right you can mention yeah. it in allowed action so whether you want to accept such users whether you want to revoke access of such accounts or if you want to further review it you can okay. do anything even if you don't want to do it it is fine while you are configuring it we mention it as an allowed action so in case you want to do that later on you have that functionality ready otherwise okay. if you mention it here and later on you want that okay i want to revoke access of all such users you won't be able to do that okay okay there is also something called as category so with it is not very important but basically more or less what we are doing here is we are just gathering information and that okay. is why this information refresh right? okay then you have risk associated that all such users who have some accounts active but their identities are inactive it they pose a very high risk right and that is why i have marked the risk as high okay now let's say i execute it okay i okay. Click on submit and i click on preview okay so okay in a good point about savient is that savient will give you a preview of the results okay okay and you'll be able to see whether you are getting all the required details or not okay before okay. actually executing the report because okay. what might happen is that you might have 10000 such accounts of users who have left the company but there are some account for some people it is sales for some for, for some uh, outlook account was not disabled for some yammer account was not disabled and stuff like that right okay. before getting the bigger report you get a smaller subset to review whether this is exactly what you're looking for right okay so, yeah username of all such users first name of all such users last name their manager their account name and so on right yes. so you see that okay it looks fine to me and if if you it finds to you then you can actually click on run now once you click on run now you will see this 
there it will ask you that we are going to generate a report just tell us which which type of uh, data type do you want the column to be in so i'm okay. saying i want all of them to be in string format they all should be fill, uh, visible and filterable okay and okay. then I, so uh, once i click on submit okay this will okay. get saved okay once it gets saved i click on run and then run now okay and now you'll so see if you click on run what will happen so we'll get the report yeah the the report will get generated okay. so now the you will see this control run summary how many records were identified as part of your report five okay. okay now if you want to see what are those records you can go to analytics history so if you see here itself uh here run history you can okay. go here as well so you can click on run and after running now, after running now so you have run okay. now you got this prompt now you want to see the result so you can also go to run history because you have already run it so it will contain a value in run history you can go there as well or in the same analytics you can click on sorry yeah in the same analytics you can where do you go yeah you can go on um, analytics history and within analytics history what is the type of job that we chose we chose information refresh so you can click on information refresh and here you will be able to see the first one uh, no this one the second last inactive users with active accounts okay here you see that how many conflicts are there five conflicts are there right so you okay. can either click on view history or you can click on this five number as well ultimately you will be able to see all the users who are part of this report or who, okay. whose accounts are now part of that report so okay. you have user name first name last name manager name and end point so if you see how do you identify that okay which target application are we talking about so you can see here that endpoint name is active directory so this person andra uh, shubhante right for this yeah. person their active directory account was not disabled for this okay. person teresa kaspari their active directory account was not disabled right okay so, sanjeev their amigo pod account was not disabled so okay. their identities have been disabled but their accounts are not right? okay so this this is exactly what we wanted to see correct yes now there are some reports where we just want this we have generated a report because i can share it with let's say my leadership get their insights that what do they want to do with all such users and stuff like that okay. the second part of it is they might tell me that you should go ahead and disable all such users so what you can do is if you want to do, do action individually you can click on the drop down and then whatever you see in the drop down will be what you configured here if you remember i told you right that you have allowed action yes yeah so you have accept revoke and further review so that yes, is what you yes. need to see here as well okay allowed accept uh, allowed accept or further review okay. now if if you want to take action individually you can do that if you want to take the same action for all such users now you might ask that okay amit we might have 5000 accounts how would i do it individually obviously you won't be able to in that case you can do from here selected action choose the option that you want and the same will be applicable to all the users which are part of the report okay right and then you click on submit so they are, what they are suggesting is that as part of this report click on uh, click action as except for the first couple of records and select further review for another one right okay so yeah two different and then you can choose a different action for the other one so this is basically what is called as analytics okay, okay. so analytics nothing but it is mostly about generating reports or doing the governance speed of a piece of identity and access management okay is this understood yes sir you can understand okay so the second the, the second part is called as a runtime analytics now what is the runtime analytics so the second thing that we were talking about was runtime analytics what is runtime okay. analytics there is is one part of database or the usual databases uh, where the values are already saved and obviously there are some database whose values will be uh, let's say uh, will be getting updated on the run time right because it is a production system obviously at the run time there will be some users will be getting more access some users will be leaving the company and all those things will be uh, will keep on happening right yes for all all such scenarios you can write something called as run time analytics so runtime analytics will give you just reporting capability of the system currently okay whatever the current data that we have so if you okay. remember whatever columns or um, tables that we used in our last query 
most of them were static in nature right okay. uh, whatever values are already stored within the database we were fetching report according to that yes. but if i want to get uh, let's say a deep dive into it mm. and I, at this point in time exactly in this point in time what you can do so if you can see here you have analytics name you have written a query so what query have you written is select case status key when zero then inactive when one then active and end as label count as data from users group by label so right now what you have done is you've generated a report where you just wanted the data points you did not want to see all the users name you just want to get numbers out of it correct okay here you can see that how many active users do we have 2500 uh, let's say 20 uh, 2507 and how many of them are inactive just four right so yes. what what what's important is that we don't always want to see the user information at times we just want the governance piece to give us the numbers and that is what runtime analytics is for that you okay. know the present numbers so how did they do that they wrote select case status key we know what status key is right so they are yes. saying that status key when zero which means that when the user identity is inactive then then um, name the column as inactive right that's what happened here we gave it as a name inactive label we have given inactive right okay yeah and then when one then active and as label right so we have given label so okay. and as and we just we just want the count we don't want the actual user values that is why we have put a comma and we have put a count uh, function okay okay and we have, so we have passed star as a uh, as a uh, placeholder okay because we want all the we want count of all these columns that we are talking about as data from users group by label okay so all this information that we got was from the users table and we have grouped them according to the label so one label would be active second label would be inactive and then there would be data right okay so if you see here the label with active inactive and the data one did not got print but ideally it would be data oh sorry the data is the column right okay yeah we have grouped by label so according to the label we have active and inactive there are certain accounts which are uh, which could be in the dormant state or they are uh, they are uh, temporarily inactive but we have not uh, provided that condition that is why you have 10 users whose label is not defined but okay. this thing like this happen all the time because though we want to every user is not part is not just active or inactive in an identity management system okay there will be some users who are on long leave for two okay. weeks, so who are on maternity leaves for such okay. users they are, they are not left the company but they are not active either right so in such cases what you will do is you will give them yeah. temporarily uh, a temporary inactive something like that so that's okay. the reason but anyways more or less we've got the gist of it that we what we want to do with, do with runtime analytics with runtime yeah. analytics we want to generate reports which are based on current data and are more numerical in nature okay okay now actionable analytics is also something that we've already discussed so i don't think so we need to again discuss it but we can just see another example so what we are saying is that i want to get all the users whose managers are not there okay okay so analytics report will display all the orphan ad accounts and provide an action to deprovision them what are orphan accounts either accounts who, which are not associated with the user identity so if i found deepa's account in active directory but that uh, but that account is not associated to her identity in savient right okay so i get to know there could be 300 deepas in my company how would i know which deepas account is which right so yeah. i believe really be linked to their accounts so that let's say if i disable or terminate your identity your accounts also get disabled at the same time correct okay yeah when you leave the company so that is why if there is an account which we do not know anything about it is better to disable it till the time no one comes in and says that okay it is my account correct okay yeah so for all such users what you can do is you can write a query but while we are writing query obviously we are just selecting what we want to see it as part of the uh, of the report the uh, the actual logic is here okay and even with, if you see here the actual logic actually starts from select account key from user accounts and then we want to have the system name as active directory and account key as ae uh, ae1 accounts key order by system one what is ae1 so it must be account 
so account key okay entitlement so we have a dot account key as account key and where is the declaration yeah accounts and entitlement table right so as i yes. told you you have sir, you have one table which will hold accounts information you have one table which will hold entitlement information and there will be one table which will hold association between that account and entitlement that will be a separate column or separate table right okay that is why we term it as accounts entitlements one okay. okay so this is what i mean this is how their database is designed you will have a user table you will have accounts table you have entitlement table and then you will also have user accounts table you will also have accounts entitlement table you will have users entitlement table why because you these objects or these tables or the or this data all together cannot work independently they are they need to be correlated to each other only that is how an identity management system gets formed right if okay. if i know that users um, that deepas identity exists within savient but i don't know which accounts is uh, is deepas account right yes. then it makes no sense i might have details about all the accounts that you have i might have details about the, the your user identity but if it is no not correlated i might, might not be able to do anything and that is the case with entitlements as well i might have your entitlements and your account information both independently but i need the correlation as well correct yes yeah so what we are, uh, again what we are saying is that we'll fetch a report of all such users and then we'll take action on it so if you remember i i told you right that you can uh, that while you are taking action you need to provide them in allowed action so if you see here i prov provided the allowed action as deprovision account why deprovision account because we have decided that if there is a person whose account is um, whose account is active but it is not associated to any user's identity we want to deprovision that account we want to remove that account from active directory itself correct and that yes. is why i mentioned allowed action as deprovision account so now what what i did was that i wrote that query okay i clicked on save i rather i clicked on preview okay when i clicked on preview i was able to see the first five entries okay, okay. so i was able to understand that okay this is exactly what i'm looking forward to now i can click on create okay so once i click on create this will get saved once this get saved i will click on run and then run now once i click on run now i'll be able to see all the conflicts when i go to history okay so if you see ad orphan accounts actionable this is a report which got generated how many conflicts are there 637 okay what i will okay. do i will click on those conflicts i will click on that this report will get opened now individually if i want i can remove access from here itself and that is okay. the important point that if you, you uh, if you remember i was telling you that you have a option of you only generate the report and maybe you can click on action and put all this data in a excel okay and then share it across but if you want to take action on it as well you can do that from here only and that is why now it is called as actionable analytics so i i clicked on the drop down and then i clicked on deprovision account and this account will get for this user will get disabled okay yeah and this is all that i wanted and as i told you it if it is needed it will go for approval most of the time when you are taking the access away it doesn't need a approval correct because yes. the problem is providing over access the problem is not giving less access so uh, obviously it will get um, it, this will trigger a task okay because it is not going for any request there will be no request but a task will get created and where will be the task get created in pending task okay so okay. if you remember the last time we were talking about this right we have a pending task created and then i will have to run the provisioning job so the provisioning jobs as the name suggest does not only talk about creating new account on the target application even if you want to revoke access or change the status of the user still you will have to run the provisioning job why because whenever you want to send a request from savient to the target application it will be through the provisioning job okay because you are pushing information whenever you are pulling information that will be called as reconciliation right yes yeah so that is how analytics works okay now another point is that if you want to create analytics or dashboarding let's leave it it's not at all important i i'll just tell you about the feature but there are very few people which actually uses it okay so in case i have generated a report but rather than seeing the data i want to see it in a graphical manner 
as a dashboard yeah. okay so save it allows you to do that as well for that you can go to role admin there is an option called as dashboards there are various pre configured dashboards which are there within that if you want you can click on analytics click on add dashboard and then you type orphan accounts and the one that you get this is the one right you check mark yeah. once you check mark this you will be able to see that okay within oracle these many uh, in elvin dev there are 7467 orphan accounts in oracle there are 48 orphan accounts and in usual system there are two orphan accounts yeah. so you will be able to do in a graphical manner okay this is not very important because dashboarding is i mean is used but it is not that important as let's say analytics or other things so in this lab what we have discussed till now is how to create analytics using sql query how to create runtime analytics that is basically reporting with numbers and then how to create actionable analytics basically generating a report and then taking an action on it as well right and then yeah. we also discuss very briefly how do we have or how do we uh, configure dashboards okay once you see what you want to achieve and once you see that okay these are the columns these are the attributes between uh, between those columns write the sql query by yourself okay and try to run it if it runs if it doesn't run if it fails it's all fine because okay. you know that at least two three queries you already have it here okay, okay. yeah so you you can evaluate whether the one that i wrote and the one that they wrote how different they were and you okay. also able to identify if you are missing what are you exactly missing correct okay so it it is mostly about error, trial and error and okay. between between these sql queries there are four or five objects which are more important as compared to others because as i told you earlier as well identity nexus management majorly talks about three four objects it talks about user identity so we need a user table we talk about you, their accounts in different applications so for that we need an account table we yes. need what access do they have within those accounts so we need entitlement table and at most we need role table because okay. we want to group together, group together these entitlements so that rather than providing individually we can create a role so okay. if you understand these three four tables uh, well enough right that is all that you need okay because see what happens is from a business perspective any uh, more complex thing may also arise correct? okay yeah Obviously, that is not that important because it it won't be expecting out of you because you are new to save it anyways. Right? Yeah. So they will just ask you whether you know about it or no. Not. They'll just ask you whether what is analytics, why it is used, can we do something more rather rather than gen just generating reports? What kind okay. of objects do they have? Do we have within analytics? How do we use those objects? These kind of things at max. So nothing over okay. and above. Okay. Okay. So okay. already I know Oracle. Mm -hmm. I know very well, but you said no SQL. My SQL is used. So th that doesn't actually create a lot of difference because if you see what see how uh, one SQL database is different from others is majorly because of the functions that you use. Correct. So yeah. more or less, if you know the column name, the select query is going to remain as it is. But if there are any complex uh, queries in terms of writing custom functions using those those functions to execute certain operations. that level when you reach that is when difference between two databases starts becoming apparent but in so this so what case, language i should learn i should learn mysql or oracle well mysql mysql okay see mysql and that too that, that's what i'm saying that if you already know oracle it is not very different i believe the select query will still remain the same if you write yes, it in oracle yes, yes. Yeah. the only thing that is going to change is the name of the table and that doesn't actually depend either on oracle or mysql it basically depends on the data on on how Savient is designed. Or Savient mm. data is designed, right? Okay, so what yeah. you need not uh, you need not focus on learning any new language for this. You just okay. need to understand how the tables are designed and how to write queries. Logically, you you know, correct? Yeah. Because there are no separate functions which needs to be learned. There is no. I mean, if you ask me when I write my analytics query, right? What I do is I and if I want to validate the syntax, let's say if I'm if I'm missing on any comma or if I have not put any and, right? Things like that. Okay. I will copy this. I will go to uh, let's say Chrome and I'll just write validate SQL. I don't even put whether I'm validating my SQL or Oracle database or uh, my uh, SQL DB. right okay. because more or less the i mean the queries are very simple it becomes difficult when you are at a very advanced stage of writing queries okay so if you see here they've written u dot user key is equals to ua dot user key what 
what does that mean that means that within the users table there is a user key for that column. user yes. right yeah within the users column there is a user key which is stored similarly yes. there is a user key which is also stored in the users account table account table right so, so in one table it will be stored as primary key and another one it is stored as foreign key yes no, am i right no no that, that's not even important i mean it okay. must be it could be that way but the logic here is what okay. we are trying to do is we are trying to see that the user's status key or the user key we are talking about the same user or not okay. so yeah. why because the user key is unique to the user so the in the users you know, sorry yeah, in the users column user key would be the primary key as you rightly mentioned right and the yeah. se second it will be the foreign key but that okay. is from a database perspective from yes. say perspective we what we are trying to achieve is we want to see that we are talking about the same user in both the tables okay. correct because yeah. what might happen is that here i'm talking about deepa you right but yeah. in the user account table there was another deepa right yes. so 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 the query might give a invalid results so what yes. we want rather than, than that is that we want we want to talk about the same user key within both these tables correct yeah so that is a uniqueness thing that you want to include and that is why you'll see that a lot even here you'll see that within the user account table there is a account key what is an account key for each target application that the user have access to there will be a unique account key which will be uh, which will be provided to that user so let's say if you have access to active directory you will be provided a primary key which will denote that you have access to that particular application okay so okay so if you have four accounts one is active directory one is outlook one is um, uh, salesforce one is success factors for each of this target application you will have separate account key okay okay so this account key will be stored in in uh, in the accounts table okay so because it is being stored in accounts table obviously it will be stored in the user accounts table as well why because the user key is going to remain a primary key there is only one okay. user key but for each target application you have an account key right yes. so the way we were denoting the the uh, the logical version of it where we were we were saying that one user can have access to multiple application at the database level how it is maintained that there is only one user key and that user key has relation to all these account keys right so mm. basically the user is deepa and then this is deepa's salesforce account this is deepa's active directory account this is deepa's uh, teams account and this is the deepa's box account each tag each of them is a unique key correct but all yes. of them are related to what the unique user key correct so that's yeah. what we want to do that we have something called as user account table as well within which we have an account key and we have account key within the account table as well right so that a account, user account and account what is the difference right so uh, as i told you in user account you will have the correlation between the user and the accounts okay right because if you if you have four accounts and there is only one deepa and deepa has four accounts so she will have only one user key right yes so she will have only one uh, column or a primary key within the users table and okay. that has to be correlated with all her accounts so i'll have to store that correlation somewhere where am i storing it i'm storing it in the users account uh, users account key right okay. user account table i'm sorry user account table so that's why we need it so individually i was storing users this is the user table this is the account table right where is the account table you have this this is the accounts acc the account table right okay so basically the 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 user table will store all the user related information account will store all the account related information but these users and accounts has to be correlated with each other right otherwise yeah. if i terminate your identity how will your access to all the target application will will go away it goes away because there is a correlation which exists between both correct okay yeah so that correlation is being maintained in a third table which is called as a, as a user accounts table okay okay so as as i mentioning you if you if you think from a venn diagram perspective you can make one circle name it as users you can make a second circle and make it as accounts and the correlation with the common area between those which are overlapping you can mention it as a user and accounts correct okay yeah so the some the, the the same information that you have in user table part of that so see if you have 10 entries or 10 attributes within the user table and you have 10 attributes in the account table five from both will exist in the user account table okay so okay. the user account table will have five attributes but those five will also exist in the user table 
five of those five will also exist in the accounts table so that's how you are maintaining the correlation okay okay so you yeah. understand it more the more you basically try and the more you learn about it uh, yeah. obviously um, what we want to understand is from logical perspective that what we are trying to achieve right then how yeah. do we do it is something that we can figure out correct okay 